Yes, I'm happy to uh, to make the next introduction. So it's uh, my great pleasure to uh, introduce to uh, you all um, Dr. Sadeg Dabiri. Um, like the other talks we heard this morning, uh, Dr. Sabiri, uh, Dabiri has recently uh, been promoted to associate professor. Um, and I wanna compliment uh, the, the organizers, uh, Arvin Rahman or, and the others for putting this together because um, I, I see a lot of uh, interesting themes um, that, uh, that are really part of the, the cohort we, we are uh, honoring and, and hearing from today. Um, uh, we, we just heard from the previous speaker, uh, some of the, the outside, the, the purely academic uh, support um, that uh, Sadeg and, and this uh, has, has provided and uh, that uh, network of others from a similar cultural background, I think is, is important uh, to, to support one another. Um, like uh, all of the candidates, uh, Dr. Dabiri has a background in mechanical engineering. Um, so maybe this is a case where uh, mechanical engineers can, can branch out and, and go into research in a wide variety of areas. Uh, Dr. Dabiri uh, has an appointment in agricultural engineering. He, can, he has a partial appointment in mechanical engineering as well. And really the connection to Carson in the first presentation is uh, Dr. Dabiri's research focuses on developing computational tools for uh, analyzing uh, complex flows uh, in, in uh, fluid systems. So um, much more on the theoretical and on the, on the fundamental and small scale uh, with large scale applications uh, that sort of complement the experimental work that, that we heard in the first talk. Um, I want to echo uh, uh, the previous uh, introducers, congratulations to this uh, entire uh, group of uh, fairly new associate professors. Congratulations, all of you on uh, all that, uh, that you've done and all you've accomplished to get to this point. And uh, I'm happy to turn the floor over now to Sadeg Dabiri to talk about uh, how uh, modeling tools can have applications, not only in combustion, as we heard in the first uh, talk, but in a wide variety of other uh, areas as well and applications where fluids are important parts of engineered systems. Dr. Dabiri. Thank you, Dr. Bojer, for the introduction and for kind words. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I have prepared an overview of the research uh, that is going on in my group. Uh, they all fall into the, the same area of uh, multi-scale modeling of uh, multi-phase flows, uh, but uh, with a, a wide range of applications. Uh, before I start, uh, this is basically the, uh, my current research, uh, my current students and uh, uh, alumni uh, who basically have done uh, all of the work, uh, all of the hard work uh, for uh, uh, there is, and they got the results that basically I'm going to uh, show you some of them. Uh, <clears throat> so our uh, uh, group is mostly focused on uh, uh, basically modeling of uh, multi-phase flows, mostly gas liquid flows with different uh, type of applications. We look at the uh, like transport and mixing, uh, looking at the cavitation, uh, uh, flow boiling, uh, for basically cooling of uh, microchips, and for uh, surface phenomena like uh, we're looking at the uh, effect of surfactants in uh, basically uh, in a, a two-phase flow uh, environment, and uh, we are mostly focused on the uh, very very fundamentals. Uh, but uh, sometimes we have the uh, applications, and uh, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, cavitation. So this is uh, mostly not this video that we will see. Usually it's not associated with cavitation, but the, the phenomenon that happens is actually uh, cavitation. So this is actually uh, a detonation uh, under uh, uh, water surface that actually itself creates a, a very large wave, but the actual destructive force actually comes after uh, the initial wave. Uh, so this is how it happens after detonation. So it, you get a bubble. And then when that bubble collapses is basically when you get all this uh, energy being concentrated at one point. And the same, uh, so this is basically a, a cavitation bubble uh, collapsing underwater. The same phenomenon actually is miniaturized and used for uh, basically the, uh, breaking up the kidney stones, where the inception process is different here, use acoustic uh, uh, sound, like acoustic waves to concentrate and create a cavitation near the, uh, basically near the, kidney stones and the collapse of those bubbles 
will uh, lead to this uh, break off of this. And so this has been uh, well established and basically been used now. Uh, next phase is that to even basically focus on more critical areas, like looking at the uh, blood brain barrier, which is actually an issue uh, for uh, transferring uh, large molecule drugs into the, from the blood into the brain. And uh, cavitation is, can, is actually a, a, a potential a mechanism to uh, creating cavitation for microbubbles inside this, uh, 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 inside the vessels to create basically a locally, uh, a, uh, essentially a locally hole that you can transport some of the drug into the, through this blood brain barrier. And so this work is the, uh, uh, so we are looking at a very simple, simplified case. Look at the basically ca ca cavitation that is induced by laser. And even for this uh, uh, bubble that grows and collapses and then rebounds, uh, even for the, the simple phenomena, it's difficult to actually get the accurate uh, model that uh, uh, predicts what is happening during this process. So this is a, the experiment is done uh, uh, in Dr. Vlahos's lab. And uh, we have... Uh, the, the, the idea is that uh, we actually, we need to include more physics to, uh, to create uh, a model that can uh, predict uh, the, uh, the cavitation process. So to see the cavitation actually, when you see these bubbles growing and collapsing after the rebound, uh, in the first, the, the initial behavior is easily predicted, but as you get through uh, further rebounds, it becomes more and more difficult to, and the error actually increases. Uh, so, what uh, we have done is to include the more physics, including the uh, heat and mass transfer during this uh, uh, growth and collapse of the bubbles. And uh, with that, uh, we've been able to improve the models that, uh, are, uh, that have been present to actually be able to get uh, uh, a better prediction of uh, what is happening during this uh, uh, phenomena. So this is on uh, one end. Uh, on the other end, uh, uh, sometimes when the, for, for, uh, we don't want to look at all of the details of the uh, something like cavitation, so we want to have a simplified model. So in this case, we are actually looking at the cavitation model for uh, basically for a gyrator pump. Uh, so this is actually a gyrator pump. It's very common uh, that's used for basically pumping uh, fuel or oil or liquid. And uh, uh, if you want to optimize this, uh, then you don't really have enough time to do detailed simulation so you want to have, to have a, a basically long parameter model for optimizing that so you can run it quickly and if you look at the uh, a cavitation bubble the red line here is actually shows the, uh, the uh, behavior that you will get but we don't really want to simulate this we want to have something uh, what we get is that the, this uh, uh, we were able to uh, by looking at the energy balance uh, for this uh, 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 for, for, for a, basically for a cavitation bubble, we were able to get uh, 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 this behavior, the average behavior of the uh, uh, bubble during this uh, growth and collapse process. And so this is a, uh, the experiment itself was done in uh, Dr. Walker's lab at Maha. And with, the, with this uh, model, we can actually reduce the time and at the same time get you know, more accurate results that is uh, based on the uh, basically energy balance between the uh, uh, the, during the growth and collapse of the bubbles. Uh, another area that uh, uh, we have focused on is uh, basically looking at the modeling of the two-phase heat transfer. Uh, basically, one of the limitations for the uh, basically incre increasing the power of microchips is uh, the, the thermal management. And uh, so one of the solutions is that for to, for, to have uh, basically two-phase heat transfer uh, where you have basically a phase change uh, that's happening right in a microchannel on the chip. And uh, by uh, having this phase change, you can actually have a, a higher heat transfer rate. Uh, but uh, actually doing the uh, simulation for this is very difficult because we end up with a very small uh, length of scale between basically a very thin film between the uh, bubble and the uh, surrounding, and uh, it's very difficult to resolve that. So uh, one of my students, Pra uh, uh, Pramod, uh, he basically developed this uh, two, uh, this multi-scale model where we actually solve for the uh, uh, for the dynamics of the bubble, but with the 
uh, full uh, governing equations and we look at the reduced order model for basically for the thin film that we have between the uh, vapor uh, between the uh, vapor and the ball. Uh, another area that uh, we have been uh, focused on is uh, looking at the uh, basically the swarm of bubbles and droplets in uh, stratified environments and the mixing that they cause. So one of the motivations for this is that uh, basically whenever you have a, a swarm of, uh, uh, like you have basically oil is at the bottom of the ocean, uh, not all of these oils get to the surface. Some of it is actually uh, leaves uh, basically is trapped in the in the middle layer here because of just of how the density is balanced with the uh, rest of the uh, with the between the oil droplets and the, uh, the uh, water, and uh, it's important to basically be able to predict how much is from what you get to the surface, how much oil has actually has been released. So what you get at from here was, uh, uh, for example, for the last oil that we have in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the, what reached the surface was much less than what was actually expected, what was seen that uh, basically comes out of this uh, uh, broken pipes at the uh, bottom of the uh, sea. So what we are actually looking at here is uh, basically dispersion of the, the uh, uh, droplets and the swarm of drops that's basically rising in a stratified flow. So from homogeneous, uh, uh, basically a uniform uh, uh, environment to basically more and more stratified where we have basically because of this salinity or temperature, we have a change of density and to see what actually happens that the, the dispersion of the uh, droplets uh, increases. And at the same time, we also look at this, uh, the mixing that happens during this uh, rise of these bubble, uh, droplets and uh, this uh, mixing itself is uh, uh, actually helpful for some applications, uh, especially when we cut the um, uh, water reservoirs, we want to limit the evaporation from the surface of water reservoirs. Um, and uh, if you can mix that, uh, mix this, uh, basically the uh, water in the reservoir, you can actually remove the uh, hot uh, uh, layer on top of the uh, reservoir, which uh, basically increases the evaporation. So we have been looking at the, uh, uh, this mixing phenomena and uh, what, uh, uh, how we can quantify that and uh, how we can basically create a, a general model for that. Right, so that was uh, basically a review of the uh, work that has been going on in my group. Uh, there are some other topics that we, uh, uh, I skipped, but I uh, uh, just wanna thank uh, my students, they've done uh, all of the work, hard work here in uh, my group. And uh, thanks for the organizers for uh, organizing this uh, event. Thank you very much for the, uh, the great uh, talk there, uh, Sadeg. Um, the floor is open to any questions that uh, might be uh, people listening on Zoom. Please type them in the chat or if there's some questions in the room. Um, Sadeg, please uh, go ahead and recognize uh, those individuals as well. Going back to Dr. Raman's opening remarks, yeah, he brought this up. What's some advice that you would give uh, junior faculty of what not to do, something that you wished you hadn't done? I, I started the collaborating with the faculties later uh, toward the end, but uh, I think that was uh, uh, something that uh, I wish I had started earlier. Uh, uh, that, because uh, um, uh, in the many, uh, you say, uh, in initially, the, we had uh, uh, when, uh, uh, from other uh, institutions, that's, that's not really case at Purdue, but uh, 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 collaboration with the more senior uh, 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 colleagues sometimes uh, uh, is um, uh, thought as you may, uh, student, you may not get the credit for that, enough the credit, but uh, I have not really seen that here at Purdue. And uh, that's something that uh, I think, uh, uh, I encourage my uh, uh, colleagues who just started to definitely see collaboration uh, with everyone, yeah. Great, uh, there is a question on the chat, uh, Sadeg, um, okay. from Fadima. Uh, I just have a very, very general question. Uh, how has teaching helped you be a better researcher in your field? I would say one thing is that the, uh, you basically, you learn so any topic. If you wanna learn it really well, you have to basically teach that. That's uh, uh, one of the things that uh, if you start uh, 
if you're teaching a subject to someone, then, then that's actually the time that you see all the questions appears in your mind about all different aspects of this. So I think that's one way that the, the teaching can actually help with the, uh, with the research, just basically providing the uh, large picture, uh, thinking of from that point of view. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, yeah, sharing the uh, research in your lab. Uh, I, I kind of uh, want to follow up the first question about uh, like collaborations. Uh, so uh, when you when you when you talk about like uh, uh, for uh, prefer earlier for collaborations, it's uh, refer to the collaboration within uh, Purdue or it could be collaboration beyond Purdue. And how to how did those get those connections? How did you meet those people? Did you reach out? Uh, send an email saying want to have coffee or did you meet them in workshop or yeah how uh, yeah something like that right yes I see and now actually if uh, I don't know when you have started but if you have started during the whole COVID it's I, I, I completely see that it could, it, it could be more difficult but yeah just uh, uh, just talking to uh, colleagues and uh, just uh, maybe stopping by their office and uh, for out uh, for collab outside collaboration, I would say the conferences are definitely the best place to find people with the similar interests uh, uh, from other institutes. Excellent. Are there any more questions in uh, either in the food room or uh, those uh, joining on Zoom through the chat? Okay. Well, thank you very much um, to all of our participants, to the heads and everything. Uh, we really appreciate your attendance, whether in, in the food room here or virtually where most of you are. So thank you very much. And this concludes this uh, celebrating our associate professor, professors session. Our next one will be on November 10th. So be watching for the e-registration for it. Thanks so much. <laughs>